<laughs> Works. <laughs> Critters! Welcome to yet another review from the Game Over Jack channel. Today we have the, now bear with me here, the Prime 1 Studios Kratos and Atreus Evaldi's Deadly Mist Armor Set Deluxe Version 1 4th Scale Statue. Jesus. Now I was a fan of this series back in 2005 when it was first released and I was definitely too young to be playing those games. Especially with the uh, mini games or QTEs before they were QTEs. That should never have been allowed for a child. <laughs> This statue of the Icon- I can- I can't- I can't speak. Iconic. Iconic. I can't do it, Captain. Iconic Sonic. I can't do it. Sonic. <laughs> Jesus. This statue of PlayStation's iconic dad of boy and boy is mind-blowingly beautiful. But let's get the hellheim on with this review. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Oh, I should be ashamed of myself. <laughs> but before we get started with the review, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. If you're looking for the unboxing and assembly of this statue, or even the videos of Baldur, I've posted the links in the description. Okay, I'm going to start with the base on this one, because it's not the most intricate or over-detailed base out of all the Prime 1 statues that I've had. So let's just get started with that. So in a sort of similar fashion to Baldur, we have the stone outer ring of the base, that has the Norse symbols and runes engraved on them, along with super glittery snow. Still not my favourite feature of this set of statues, but there is an upside that I will come back to. Now, the stonework itself is not the best. For some reason, the paint used doesn't give it the sort of rock-like look that I would have expected. It for some reason looks more glossy. I don't know if this is just an error in painting or if it was intentional to resemble a wet look. But given how it looks, I'm leaning more towards it being an error in paint choice. Strangely enough, the same paint glossiness is done again over the upturned roots and branches that are all over the base, as well as in certain sections. This is a lot more noticeable here at the front of the base, on the higher raised portion. It just looks really strange. Now, the snowcat rocks on the ground is done really nicely regardless of that glitter. The rock work used on the ground is very simplistic but it works nicely to show the main part of the statue, dad and boy. Now going on to Atreus, I'm going to start this one with a complaint. The left hand on Atreus has got a little bit of paint scraping, and by a little bit I mean a lot. The Almost the entire half of the arm has gold paint and it's been scraped clean off. I will be messaging Prime 1 in the coming days to get this sorted, hopefully it's a quick and easy fix. Another issue I've also found with this same hand is that the arrow will not notch into the key and that doesn't bode well considering it's made of a metal material it could bend over time. Hopefully I can get this fixed but we'll just have to wait and see. The head sculpt is a bit of an odd one here. It looks fantastic in person but for some reason does not translate well onto the camera but I can happily assure you that the head sculpt does look great in person with the signature Prime 1 translucent skin tone. Even his scar on the left side of his face is very well detailed. The hair is nicely detailed, as well as going into that mini mohawk of his. Onto his right arm, the paint application here is not so great either, uh, with the leather straps that he has from the game being painted really lazily. Tattoos on his forearm are also really well done though, so thankfully that saves it a little. The armor and body itself have a few good points and a few minor flaws. The fur is textured and sculpted nicely, the armour is nicely sculpted as well, but some of the paint application is a bit lacking again, especially around the stomach. His waist strap does have yet another paint issue though, with the rope around his body being badly painted, almost like they decided just to sling some mud at it. The trousers are really well textured and weathered with really nice paint application, so that's, that's definitely a bonus to this piece. Then onto the feet that have that glittery shine from it, from the snow on the base. Which looks decent on this one, but it would have been nice to see that same effect on the Baldur statue, which we've done previously. No, not the only attachment. Please stop. Shut up. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I get so angry. This is what I'm like. See, every time I record, I'm swearing at myself. I need a fucking gag reel. I need gag reels. And lastly, the only other attachment piece is the quiver, which is painted and sculpted beautifully. 
and then we have the arrows at the top which are painted a little simply, but they're still really nice. Okay, now for the big man himself. Prime 1 really do stand above and beyond all the competition when it comes to bringing these video game characters to life. This guy is imposing as hell. Obviously we don't have the translucent skin tone here as anyone who's played the games knows that Kratos has been tinted white with the ashes of his daughter and wife from the original trilogy. That's fucking grim. No need to discuss the hair this time because he's BALD! <laughs> But we do need to discuss his beard. One of the more disappointing parts of this statue, unlike Baldur, the beard on Kratos is very flat and not painted all that well in all honesty. This is the same for all three head sculpts. The beard on all three only have one tone of colour and, and again, it's glossy. Why the hell is his beard glossy? The other two heads do seem to have a little bit of greying on them, but I think that's more paint scraping than intentional painting. So we've actually got three heads here, as I mentioned before, because of course there's switch outs for days. We have mild disappointment in your boy. Mean look. And you're dead, you just don't know it yet. Kratos with no skin, he's like, <laughs> my fucking colossal titan over here. Starting with mild disappointment, it's got the ashy skin tone and red tattoo mark. Really nicely aged, darkened eyes, but most understated is the creasing on the back of the neck and the long vein running down the side of his neck. Love this stuff, and I love the little details. The only differences that are really noticeable at first glance in these parts are the way the mouth looks. But if you look closely between the three, there are actually more subtle differences as you move between Kratos' stages of anger. Moving from mild to mean, you can see the intensity in the eyes changing and the brow furrowing further, and the wrinkles on the forehead becoming more pronounced. But the change to death roar has even more with the veins popping out around his temple and the eyes becoming even more intense and focused. Each of these head sculpts feature the cold, cracked lips, and in the latter two heads you can see his teeth, which are glossy, which, is, which kind of works here. Other than the lackluster beard, these head sculpts are all awesome, but I think I'll stick with the death row one as the one to display. The body itself is absolutely beautiful, showing this hulking beast of a man in all his glory, rippling muscles and all. Mm. Die! The veins and muscles are perfectly sculpted, and that scar from Zeus at the end of the third game in the original trilogy oops, spoilers, just looked fantastic. Now this version of the statue features a Valley's Deadly Mist armor, which is a fantastic late game armor, and the other version that Prime 1 are making is the Valkyrie armor set. But let's be honest here, it isn't Kratos unless we see some bare chest. Moving on, we have the leather textured brace across his chest running from his shoulders, which is adorned with the Ivaldi armor which uses a beautiful dark green, almost transparent resin with gold accents painted over it, with more intricate designs on the larger of the two shoulder pads. Moving down from Kratos' left shoulder pad, the Evaldi armor continues into his leather-wrapped bicep and then onto his forearm bracer, with more Evaldi armor covering the back of his arm and hand. The painting and texturing on the leather portions is absolutely phenomenal. And then onto his big beefy mitts. These parts are sculpted perfectly and painted great. In his hand we have the insanely awesome Leviathan Axe, a fantastic weapon throughout the entire game, and one of the many switch out for this DX statue. Now many would make comparisons to Thor's Mjolnir, and they'd be right to do so because both of these weapons were actually made by Sindri and Brock, who you meet in the game, and the axe was specifically made to oppose the power of Mjolnir. Now this version of the Leviathan Axe is the Valkyrie's Might version, and it's absolutely beautiful with the gold metallic painting of the elongated pommel and the wood effect along with the metal looking inlay and the runes etched throughout the entire of the hilt and grip. Moving on to the bladed part of the axe, we have an incredible number of runes and symbols. The paint application here is perfect as well with the use of dark grey, silver and metallic gold. Now we'll come back to the DX switch outs a little later, but for now we'll move on to the other arm. We have a much smaller version of the Avaldi shoulder pad, which leads us to an incredibly detailed bicep. The way the muscles are perfectly sculpted in the veins are a nice little addition to this part, running through the ash white skin to the red fading tattoo. Now one really understated feature on both arms is the elbows. Yes, the elbows. The attention to detail getting the creasing of the skin of this aging man is amazing. Now, onto the forearms and hand, we have the same Evaldi armor as the right hand, but in this hand, we actually have the huge Guardian Shield. 
which on the outside uses a really nice metallic gold paint again, but on the inside we have the gold metallic framework with a red scaled sculpt. It would have been nice to have something to prop this up with when we want to show off the other switch outs, but we can't have it all. Yeah. Now onto his waist and legs. We'll start at the front and work our way around. Firstly we have some more of the beautiful Avaldi armour. Then we have the Bifrost key which uses a pale blue to make it have the otherworldly look. Further around we have a little pouch with the ashes of Kratos' dead partner and Atreus' mother. Fix that. Followed by a leather sheathed dagger or knife. Looks like Kratos' trusty butter knife which has more runic symbols carved into the wooden portion and wrapped in nicely sculpted rope. And then we have Kratos' little man satchel. And then the highlight of the utility belt we have Mimir's head with LED functions! This little head sculpt is fantastic with all the detail in the skin and the runes tattooed on his head. The skin tone is perfect yet again for this awesome character. Love this guy's stories throughout the game. Love you head! <laughs> also if you take the head off you can see the gore from where Kratos cut his head off the tree where Odin left him. We have the rest of the utility belt using a great leather like texture and then if you look a little further down we have some red tattered straps which just add to the overall look of Kratos. Now, onto his trousers which are sculpted and textured so well, showing all that weathering. And we have the leather kneecaps that just look absolutely... Further down we go to more tattered and weathered trousers until we get to the highlight of this piece. This snow effect on Kratos' boots is absolutely amazing. Yes, it's still using that glittery effect, but it's been applied so well to this section. Why couldn't you have done this everywhere else? I absolutely love this part. It just makes it look like real frost buildup, and it's absolutely perfect. Now, as always with Prime 1 statues, we always need a vast array of switch outs. Including the three separate heads mentioned before, we have another beautiful Leviathan Axe, which keys into a little holder over Kratos' right shoulder. Or you can interchange this with the dual Chaos Blades. And the best part of this statue, the Chaos Blades in Kratos' hand which switches with the axe and the shield. Now these Chaos Blades, both the handheld ones and the jewel blades on his back are so nicely designed and painted. These are the fully upgraded versions of the blades which were originally fashioned and created by the Greek god of war Ares to chain Kratos in servitude. The length of the blades have those awesome runic symbols again all the way to the tip of the blade. Now I'm not entirely sure what monster this is, or used to be, but this has stayed part of the blade since the original games, but in this version has been given a new look with the gold metallic paint used again to cover the monster's skull and used for the handguard and the serpentine pommel. This is a really nicely designed for this statue and I absolutely loved it. And on the left arm, when the chaos blade is in hand, we have a really cool retracted shield recess, which I honestly almost overlooked. And the last little tiny switch out is the omega symbol that holds the leviathan axe in place on Kratos' back. A really small detail, but it's nice that it was given as a separate attachment. Same can be said of a tiny little leather strap for the other shoulder where the Chaos Blades key in. Now one part I failed to mention in the initial recording of this review was the materials used for the actual weapons themselves. The weapons feel sort of more plastic made, not such high grade material as the rest of the statue. Except for the chains on the Chaos Blades which are actually made of metal. Which was a nice little addition, but the... The fact that they're made of plastic is a little disappointing again. Now onto the size of this absolute beast of a statue. This statue from the bottom of the base to the tip of the tallest weapon, the Leviathan Axe, stands at 72 centimeters tall. The width in the fashion that it is meant to be displayed is 52 centimeters wide and 49 centimeters deep. So this statue has a huge presence and as Kratos should be, it's super imposing. Now the pricing of this insane statue comes in a grand total of 1,399 US dollars, not including shipping. So yes, it's a very expensive piece. But overall, I absolutely love this statue. Dad, boy, head, it's an absolutely perfect piece. And I'm so glad I jumped on this when I did. And it looks especially awesome when paired with the companion piece, Balder, and his EX bonus item, the logo. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, these two statues look absolutely amazing together. I couldn't be happier with this setup. The diorama is now complete. So that'll be it for me on the God of War line from Prime 1 Studios, unless they do something absolutely phenomenal for the God of War Ragnarok game coming out. But that pretty much wraps up this review. What did you think of this statue? 
If you have any questions, please drop a comment below. And if you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more statue reviews. But until the next one, thanks for watching and see you next time.